Hey guys, welcome back to the log cabin. Doug is up at the front in the wood lot and he's cutting some wood. And today I thought it would be good to go ahead and do some ferments. I went down in the root cellar and I got some onions because one of my favorite things to do is to ferment onions. It's sort of like a pickled onion and it's great for so a lot of you guys maybe that aren't sure how to start fermenting. This might also be a great way to start because they're great in sandwiches and your salads and they just really have a good soury kind of taste and it is the best. I've already chopped up my onions and I've sterilized my jars and now I'm getting ready to make my brine. A lot of people always ask me, does water have to be, you know, cold, hot, however, you know, you do it when you're making your, your brine. And I just, like room temperature, or maybe just you know, to my touch, it should just be very slightly warm because then I think the um, salt dissolves a lot better. And for every quart, I'm always gonna do four teaspoons of unrefined salt. And I really like to use the real salt, the Redmond real salt. And uh, you just put the four teaspoons in your water. So all I'm gonna do is just mix up the salt into my water. And as you can notice, this is a pint sized jar and I'm making a quart. So you're not gonna need as much water because I'm gonna go ahead and fill my jar with the onions. And the onions have a lot of water in them, so they're gonna produce a little water too. So I'm not gonna need a full quart of water. I also like to add herbs into my onions when I'm making them. So today I have a lot of parsley growing outside still in this cold weather, it does like cold weather. So I'm gonna put some parsley in it. It adds just a little flavor to the onions. So now I'm gonna use my acacia wood packer and I'm gonna mush it down because these onions are a lot of, of water. So I'm gonna mash it down really good so that I can add some more to it. So I'm gonna add another layer of my parsley. And then I'll put a little bit more onions into it. And what I like about this packer is it has a regular mouth size for my regular mouth jars and it has a bigger one for the wide mouth jar, so it works out great. So now it's time to pour the brine over my vegetables. And you wanna make sure that all the liquid is going and filling up, because sometimes people will fill it up and you won't get all the liquid through. So what I like to use is a good old fashioned chopstick. I just get a chopstick and then I push it through and then all the liquid will go in between. So I'm gonna pour it till about, I have at least an inch, inch and a half headspace. You need to keep that headspace because it does produce gas as it starts to ferment. And then if not, it starts to ooze out and it can kind of make a big mess. So that's why that extra headspace is sort of like a little extra insurance for you while you're fermenting. You have to make sure that we're keeping all of the vegetables underneath the brine. Now, years ago when I first started fermenting, I used a, a rock, <laughs> different sizes rock depending on the size of the jars. And I used to call it my pet rock that I used. Or you could use what you're fermenting. So let's say today I'm doing onions. I could use a piece of onion, set that on top so it goes underneath the brine. Or possibly if you're doing sauerkraut, you wanna use a big piece of cabbage and put that down over to keep it underneath that liquid. Until I got a Mason Tops fermenting kit and inside the kit came these glass pucks, just like this. And then you'd put them in top of the jar like this, but when it was time to take them out after the fermentation process, you might have to, have to stick your hand in there or stick a fork or something and pull them out but they were listening to their customers and they have upgraded and now they have this really cool handle on them that you can put and it's very easy just to take it right out of the jar when it's done. Notice that the onions are underneath the brine, they're underneath the water here, and from where the water is till the top of the jar, that's about an inch there, so I have that much headspace, so that's what headspace is. Yeah, because you need that extra headspace because it will run over the top, because these are onions too, they do have a little water in them, so it'll kind of um, create a little bit more liquid into the ferment and through the fermentation process, the gases are coming out, so you don't want any messes. So just make sure you have the headspace before you go ahead and put your airlock on top. And speaking of airlocks, in the Mason Tops fermenting kit comes these totally cool airlock tops, just like this. 
And that's what I'm going to use. I'm going to put it on top, just like that. And then you're going to use a ring, just like on your mason jars. And I just love these. They're great because you can do, I do so many ferments I can have, and I like the different sizes, and they work out great. I don't really have to worry about anything, any messes or anything. Now, another option if you don't have the mason tops airlock top, you can just use the flats that come with your mason jars. And then, let's say here's all my onions in here. All you're going to do is you're going to need to burp it every single day so because it's going to create the gas. So very gently, you're just going to kind of turn it and you're going to hear kind of the air coming out, but you don't want to like take the lid off because you don't want any oxygen in there because oxygen is a bad guy. You don't want the oxygen in there. So you're just going to go ahead and just burp it a little bit daily every single day, but you got to stay on it because as the days go on, it's going to be creating a lot of buildup in there and you need to make sure that you are burping it. They call that burping it because if you don't burp it, you could have a definite big mess. That's why I really like these because the air comes out just naturally and I don't have to worry about it. I know a lot of you guys have been following me doing these fermenting videos for a really long time and a lot of you will contact us and say that they got what they thought was mold and they threw out their ferment. Nine times out of ten when we ask them to send us a picture this is what they have. This is what you call chyme yeast, K-A-H-M, chyme yeast, and it's perfectly normal. Chyme yeast is just a term for many different types of um, harmless yeast that grow on top of ferments. As you can see, see it looks kind of like waxy, it's very thin, it's not a mold, but it's an aerobic yeast that forms when sugar is used up and your pH drops because the lactic acid in it is forming. So what I generally try to do is I go ahead and I'm going to... I use a little paper towel generally and I take it off just like that and it comes off very 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 simply and easy. Many people don't even take the kind yeast off they just kind of mix it all up in there but I prefer to take it off I take the whole thing off just like this. Now the kind yeast versus mold mold usually starts where you start with little spots like little circle spots they could be white fuzzy they could be blue, it could be green, it could be black, it could be pink, and then it'll form from there. It might be um, lifted and raised like little hills and valleys. That's different than the chymese, which is a more smooth and it covers the full surface of it. Now this chymese is a harmless yeast. We have yeast in the air. There's yeast in when we make bread and yogurt and many different like vinegar sauces, soy sauce, salad dressings. Now, here's the question that you're all wanting to know. What causes the chyme yeast? Well, it could be a few things, and I had grabbed this. I went down in the root cellar to see if I could find one that had some kind of yeast on it. And as you can notice, these are a variety of peppers. So if you look at what you're fermenting and they're higher in sugar, like a carrot, a beet, peppers, they're going to have a little higher sugar content. So you may find that those are the ones that get the kind of yeast over maybe a cabbage if you're making a sauerkraut. Another possibility for causing kind of yeast could be because you are using bigger chunks of your vegetables. So as you can see here, I like some of mine that have the bigger chunks of the vegetables. Those generally might get it because it takes longer to ferment. If I'm going to shred it, like if I shredded the carrots or shredded the beets, or I shredded a lot of the vegetables, then the chances it's going to ferment quicker. So the possibilities of getting that kind of yeast might not be as much. So that could be one reason. And another reason it could possibly, maybe you didn't use enough salt and what you're fermenting. I always generally like to do four teaspoons per quart. If you had a pint, I would do two nice teaspoons of salt. So that could be a possibility too. So just so you guys know that that kind of yeast is harmless, you can scrape it off, kind of stir it up, put it in cold storage. That's what I'm gonna do with this right now. I am going to put this in a dark place right now. It's gonna ferment about 10 to 14 days. I'm gonna put it in my pantry and then um, I'll just check on it every few days to make sure everything's okay. And then when that's finished, I will go ahead and take off the airlock top, take out the glass puck, then I put my flat on it and then I put my ring on it and then I will put it someplace cool like in the basement, in the root cellar, in your refrigerator because, refrigerator because it will slow down the fermentation process. Another question that we get a lot of is how come when I eat a ferment I sometimes get a rumbly stomach or I get gassy or bloaty feeling and it's possibly because you're eating too much at one time. 
You only need a little bit. So, so maybe start with a tablespoon and then work yourself up to two tablespoons, but you don't really need any more than that. For example, last night, Doug and I had lamb burgers. So we went ahead and we put a tablespoon or so of onions, of the fermented onions, on top of our burger. And that's what we used instead of like regular fresh onions. And it was great. Well, thanks for stopping by the log cabin today. And I hope I answered some questions you might have about fermenting or maybe why you're afraid to start fermenting. And please leave a comment below if you've ever had this happen to you and you've done this and thrown out your ferment. Or possibly if you're going to start fermenting now. Have a great day and I'll see you guys tomorrow.